Good morning, Oakwood. Glad you're here this morning, and what a great time of worship this morning. Just glimpses of what heaven's going to be like. Uh, Won't it be awesome to sing those songs in the presence of God someday, to be able to just be there in His presence and just bask in the glory of the Almighty God. What What a special time of worship, and I love that new song, Fully Devoted. I mean, if that doesn't get you going, your wood's wet, you know what I mean? Get you fired up. So, hey, we're in a, we're in a new series. This is week two uh, called Transformed, and Alan talked about that a little bit earlier. Last week, we talked about willing surrender, and we learned that a transformed life is marked by willing surrender. And we talked about how that's not just a one-time surrender. A lot of Christians think, well, that's just a one-time thing. I, I come to the Lord, and I surrender my life to Him, and that's it. But we actually talked about how that is something that we have to do over and over and over again. It's a daily surrender. It's a daily conscious decision that we make to give our lives over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the Heavenly Father. And today, we're going to be talking about another marker of spiritual transformation in our life, and we're going to learn it from uh, the book of Romans in chapter 12. So if you have your Bible this morning, I invite you to turn with us to Romans chapter 12. If you didn't bring a Bible, just grab that one right there in front of you and turn it to page 947. You'll be right where we need to be this morning, Romans chapter 12. And just a reminder to everyone, if you haven't tried this, it's really awesome. You can get out your smartphone, you go to the App Store, the Google Play Store, search Oakwood Enid, and you can download our app and the sermon notes and the scriptures and everything are right there on your device. So feel free to jump on our guest Wi-Fi access and, and download that this morning, follow along those ways. So last week we talked about Romans chapter 12, we just did verse 1. Today we're going to do verse 2, but just to lay the foundation because these two verses work in tandem together, we're going to go back to verse 1, we're going to begin there this morning, so uh, please follow along as I read. I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now our verse for today, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans 12, 2. You see, the first verse talks about how we're going to offer our bodies as living sacrifice. It brings up that, hey, you're supposed to be a living sacrifice for God. You're supposed to be holy and pleasing to God. And that, that how is really answered in the second verse. And it's, it's explained really in two exhortations there. We offer our bodies as living sacrifices by refusing to be conformed to this world and instead allowing ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Now, both of these words in the Greek are present passive imperatives. And what that means is it's an ongoing action. It's just not a one-time thing. It's not conformed and transformed. It's we're going to not be conforming. We're going to be continually transforming. And so it's a process that's going to go on all of our lives. Now, in English, these two verbs share a common root and that word is the word form. And in, in a sense, it means to form and to shape. You know, conform, transform. But in the Greek, those two words have very different roots. Conform comes from the word schema and transform from the word morphe, where we would get our English word morph. If something changes, it morphs. Scholars make a sharp distinction about these two words. Because schema, the conform, refers to a superficial or surface quality, where the morphe 
refers to the inner person, the inner essence of a person. So conform would imply only a superficial change, where transform would uh, apply a deeper abiding change in us. So we could read it like this today. Be not outwardly conforming, but be inwardly transforming. I.e., the demands of this world require no more than outward super, superficial conformity to its ways and its customs. That's what the world wants. wants us to just act the way that it wants us to act. The Christ life demands that complete and fundamental inner change happens. A transformation which fulfills and accomplishes regeneration and renewal, the title of today's message. Here's what I want you to understand this morning. A transformed life is marked by renewed thinking. A transformed life is marked by renewed thinking. Renewed thinking is how you will know the will of God in your life. As pastors, on church staff, and I'm sure some of you as just Christians out in the world, you've been asked that question before. How can I know God's will for my life? I want to know what God's will is. Well, we can find his, his good, his acceptable, his perfect will by renewing our minds. Only a renewed mind can discern these things. And so, so it's a cause and effect. It's like we renew our minds so that we can know more of what God wants in our lives. So only nonconformists who live the transformed life will know the will of God. A transformed life is marked by renewed thinking. And that person that you look up to in the faith that Alan Glor just talked about a few minutes ago, that person that is mature in Christ, that person that you stand back and you see them as a spiritual leader in your life, as a pillar in your life, as someone who would help you, in your time of need, you would run to them. The chances are you are experiencing someone who has a renewed mind, who loves and knows the will of Christ who has been through a transformed life experience where God has changed that person literally from the inside out to be more like his son, Jesus. Now, by this point, most of you are saying, yes. Man, what he's, what he's talking about, yes, that is what I want. That is, that is what I need. I know my life would be better if, yes, yes, but how? How, how does this happen? How am I going to renew my mind? Because my mind just seems to be to be so clouded these days and so, much, so focused on other things. How do I move away from conforming and move more toward transforming? I want to share a few thoughts with you this morning. The first one is this, is we need to start paying attention to our thought life. You need to start paying attention to your thought life. And here's what I mean by that. I want you to think about what you think about. That was deep. Woo. I want you to think about what you think about. If you played this last week in review, what do you find your mind most obsessed with? When you're by yourself and it's quiet or you're in the car and you're, you're driving, you're by yourself, where does your mind go? Because we're told in the scriptures that we're to take every thought captive. But for what? Let, let's read that scripture, 2 Corinthians 10, 4-6. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive, why? To obey Christ. We take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. You see, we are to be thinking about what we're thinking about. We're to be paying attention to what comes into our mind and what we allow to come in there because everything in this renewed mind process, it's all going to start right here between our ears. And if we're really honest, sometimes it's not about letting garbage in. Sometimes it's not letting the stuff that we've already consumed, the stuff that's already in us, not letting it come out. Have you ever been with a group of people and everybody's playing what I call the know-it-all game? You know, everybody knows everything. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. And there's always that one person that doesn't know. Like, they just, they just don't know. They didn't watch it. You know, maybe you're talking about a movie. You know, oh, yeah, and you see that part. Yeah, and, you know, and this person doesn't know. Or you're talking about some topic. Like, yeah, do you understand this and the new rules and this and then this? And, and that person doesn't know. We would, we would do what? We call them what? 
call them naive, right? Oh, you're so naive. Oh, you just don't know anything. A lot of times we do that with, with children. We'll call children, oh, they're just so naive. Or, or someone maybe that's a little younger us that hasn't experienced as much. But, you know, I got really convicted this week about that word naive. Because I'm thinking, sometimes when people are naive, I actually think they're pure. I actually think that they're actually more pure than I am. And when I sit there and kind of prideful and think, well, I, yeah, I know that. And they just, they haven't been exposed to that yet. It's like, praise God they haven't. And so maybe we need to rethink that a little bit. Is Maybe they're not naive. Maybe they're just pure. And maybe they're just more pure than we are. We have got to start paying attention to what we're thinking about. Start, t- start paying attention to your thought life. The second one, and I'd recommend this morning, is to monitor closely the messages you are watching and listening to. This really goes with the first one. We're going to think about what we're thinking about, but now we're going to monitor all of the media consumption that comes into our lives. What we're watching, what we're listening to, what you consume, what you're allowing in. Now, what did your mama always tell you when you were a kid? When she was worried about you playing that video game, worried about you watching that movie that was PG-13 that was exposing you to some content and some words that she didn't want you to hear? She would say something to you like, garbage in, garbage out, right? Has everybody heard that before? Garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you have just garbage come into your life, you have garbage come out. And if you think about it, where do you learn some of the language? The garbage comes in. Where do you learn some of the thoughts that you wish you could hold better captive? Because the garbage comes in. And so it's really true. Mom knew what she was talking about when she said, hey, sometimes, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Because, you know, I always thought, hey, more Jesus in, more Jesus out, right? I mean, there's something to that, and so we really have to monitor closely what's coming into our lives, and we need to put it through the filter of Scripture. I want you to, to bring your attention to this verse, Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4.8 says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So what we need to do here is we need to run our media and our music consumption through this filter of Scripture because then it will edify our transformed life. Because some of what you saw this week was not true. Some of it was not honorable. Some of it was not pure. It was not lovely, commendable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Some of what you listened to and the songs you listened to, some of the things that you looked at or you read online were far from these things. And so we put it through this filter. Is it true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, praiseworthy? And don't miss what it says at the end of Philippians 4 eight. What does it say at the end there? It says to think about literally means well upon These things, pure things, excellent things, lovely and admirable things, not on negative things, not on sinful things. And so if you really want a transformed life and you really want a renewed mind, guess what? we got to start dwelling on these things in Philippians 4.8. So now you have Philippians 4.8, the filter. Then you put all of your consumption, all of your thoughts, and all of your media through. So we're not dwelling on and thinking about and becoming consumed with negative or sinful things. Sometimes being exposed to too much negative and sinful stuff, I think it overwhelms a person's soul, their heart and their soul. Literally, I think it is a heavy burden. And if you have been pure before and then you've opened doors to that kind of stuff in your life, you know exactly what I mean. It becomes a heavy burden. It becomes a bad conforming to the pattern of this world habit. How are you going to conform to the pattern of this world? You've got to learn it, right? Where are you going to learn it? You're going to learn it on TV. You're going to learn it in the movies. You're going to learn it in the music. And the world is sending us those messages all the time. And the sad thing is the way the human mind works, you can't erase it. I mean, don't you wish you had an eraser button sometimes? You, you see something, even just by accident, you see something, you hear something, you're like, whoa, I wish I didn't hear that. I wish I didn't know that. I wish I hadn't been exposed to that. But there's no erase button in the mind. So we have to start paying attention to what we're paying attention to, thinking about what we're, what we're going to be thinking about. And we have to monitor closely the messages that come in that we're watching and we're listening to. The third thing is that we need to find 
a friend or join a group of friends that will help you in your transformation process. Now, I don't want to belabor this point this morning because later in this series, we're going to talk more about biblical community and accountability and all those things. But I, I want to tell you this morning, you are better off living a transformed life with accountability and support. Accountability, eh, we're not liking that so much, right? Then I got to be vulnerable and I got people up in my business that know my stuff and I got to be open to people and I'm really a, I'm really, I'm, I'm a closed off person and, and so I really don't like accountability, but support sounds great. I would definitely take support. That's what I look for when I go to people is not accountability, but support. And so, you know, and a lot of us, you know, we play this card, well, I'm a private, I'm, a, I'm just a private person, I'm a private Christian, That's, you know, because you saw that in scripture somewhere where Paul was so private and Jesus was so private and all the disciples were they're the private, private followers of Jesus. They you know, lived in their little gated community and kept to themselves and they didn't mess with anyone. And just, you know, we are called to do life together and to be in this biblical community for accountability and for edification and for encouragement and support when we need it. I think there's a lot of power that God gives a group of friends joining together for the common purpose of moving toward change and transformation in their lives in Him. I guarantee you, you try that, great things will happen. If you've never experienced it before, just try it. The fourth thing this morning is that we need to saturate our minds. You need to saturate your mind with the Word of God. And I chose the word saturate there on purpose. I want to be so full of the word of life, so full of the Holy Scriptures. I want you to devote yourself to reading the Bible more than anything else you read. Because here's the fact this morning. If I came to you this morning, a lot of you know more about what the Enid Morning News and Eagle says than what the Word of Scripture says this morning. Because you got up in the middle of the night at like 5.30 and went out to your driveway and grabbed this little paper thing with a rubber band on it. You got it out of the table and you read it. And you know all about what's going on. I mean, you know all about everybody's opinion about this, everybody's opinion about that. You know that the Thunder spanked the Cavaliers yesterday. You know LeBron stunk, and you know that our team was better. I mean, you, you know what's going on in the world, and you know, you, some of you, you know, you're the business people. You read the business too. I can tell you about the stock market, and my investments are up, and my portfolio and stuff. I don't want you to be an expert in that stuff. I want you to be an expert in the Word of God. What does the Scripture say this morning? Renew your mind, so then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is good, acceptable, perfect will. If you want to know the will of God in your life, you can't find it in the newspaper. Some of you are into that online blog thing. You're into the online blog. You're reading everybody's blogs, everybody's opinion on everything else in the world. That's not where you're going to find it. That's not where you're going to find the truth. Some of you are watching this video blog. Some of you, you just get all this information and you become saturated with worldliness and what the world's opinion or what your favorite person in the world's opinion is on everything. Some of you can tell me because you're so well-versed in your romance novel. I mean, you just read books and you can tell me all about these stories. Some of you could tell me all about the YouTube channel you watch. And I subscribe to this YouTube channel and I watch it. I could tell you all that's going on. I mean, some of this is just mind numbing. Okay, I have just a little bit of this in my house. I've got, you know, three daughters and they, they all love media and they, they love screens and devices and they get on these things. And some of them, some of them are just mind numbing. The way people talk, it's just like endless batter about nothing. And we need to be saturating our minds, not with those things, but with the Word of God. Reading more of the Word. We have an opportunity more than any other time in history to do this and to make it really easy. We have this thing called the Bible app. You can have the Bible wherever you are. And don't tell me you don't have your phone with you right now, like all innocent in the pew, like, oh, I don't have my phone. Left in the car because I'm really holy that way. You know, you have it with you all the time. You can get scripture on there. You can actually have it pop up a reminder to say, hey, do your devos. Don't forget God today. I mean, you can have this come up in your email if you're an email person. Hey, you, can, you can go to a website and subscribe to a daily devotion that has some scripture and some thoughts about God and have it emailed to your inbox every day at 6 a.m. So the first thing you do when you check your email the day is you have devotion. You have scripture right there. And it's in our verse today. 
It's in our verse. The transformation is highlighted as what? It is an exercise of renewing the mind. Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount, think about this, that murder and adultery are committed internally long before they're committed externally. That murder and adultery are committed in the mind and thought about in the mind before they are thought about out in the world. For believers to live out the change brought about by redemption, they have to be spiritually renewed in their mind. It is a requirement. How often have we all heard, well, how can I know the will of God? I mean, if you're a Christian and you're just out there in the world, you've heard that before. And it's answered in the scripture today. The simple solution is the proper starting point. Renew your mind. And we point our lives toward Jesus. And in particular, we consume what he wants us to through the scriptures. And our minds, as we do this, become into alignment with the thoughts of God and will know what his will is, his good, pleasing, his perfect will. Last thing this morning is we need to pray and ask God for his divine help. So let's, let's go through these. Let's think about these again, okay? Start paying attention to your thought life so there's an awareness there. Monitor closely the messages that you're watching and listening to, what you're consuming in media. Find a friend. Join a group of friends. They're moving the same direction toward a transformed life. You're going to saturate your mind with Scripture more than anything else. And the last one is you're going to pray and ask God for his divine help because you do not have the power to change you. You cannot transform yourself. God is the one that does all that. He wants to change you from the inside out. He wants to show you the transformed life that you always dreamed of, that you've always thought about. What would my life be like if I was really fully devoted to following Jesus Christ? Because if you look at your life right now, all of the problems, all of the issues, all of the messes, the sinful pattern that maybe you feel like you're stuck in, many of those things that you hate, about your life right now. They're directly tied to conforming to the sinful pattern of this world. And we are called to get out of that. We're not conformers. We're transformers. And we're going to do that through renewing our minds because we're going to be thinking about Jesus and Christ and His Scriptures more than anything else in our life. And He wants to empower us. He wants, to, he wants His Spirit that He's given us when we accept Him. He wants us to see this into completion through the Spirit's power. A transformed life is marked by renewed thinking. And what's competing here? What's it really about this morning in our scripture? It's competing. It's the, power, the pattern of the world versus God's will. It's the pattern of the world versus the will of God. It's the world's ways versus God's ways. That's what's competing here. And deep down inside each of us, we would acknowledge, all of us would probably say right now, I know, we know that God's way is the best way. But we don't live that. Because we are tempted and we are lured away by the world's offerings through the deception of Satan himself. And to be transformed and to be changed fully as God intended, we have to take an action. And the scripture tells us to repent and turn to God. Literally to turn your back on the world and to turn to God. In Acts chapter 2, Peter was preaching this great sermon. And he was talking about Jesus. And he was talking about what Jesus had done on the cross. And he was talking about this. And the crowd was gathering. And, and all of a sudden there was a couple thousand, three thousand people there listening to his message. And they were cut to the heart when they heard about how Jesus had suffered and died for them. All that he had done for them. They're like, what can we do? What can we do to be saved? And I'm going to repeat to you exactly what Peter said to that crowd. When they say, we want transformed lives. We don't want to live this way anymore. Help us. What do we need to do? This is what Peter said. He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you for the forgiveness of sins. And then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And after you take that step of repentance, your life is going to completely change. And you're going to walk, as it says in Romans 6, in newness of life. And everybody say, ah, because that's what we want. A lot of us want to hit the reset button and say, I want a new life. I want a different life. This is not the where I thought I would be. This is not the life that I really wanted. It's probably not the life that God dreamed for you either. So you... 
you decide, hey, I'm going to repent. And I'm going to willingly surrender. And I'm going to renew my mind. And I'm going to allow God to do this transformation in me. And when you do that, I guarantee you, amazing things will change in your life. And you'll finally be on a path to being all that God created you to be. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, because then you'll be able to test and approve of what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. Let's pray.